Hello and welcome to Stockwatch presented by me, Evan Lucas for Go Market Securities. As always, please have a good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature. None of it is relied upon as any form of personal advice. Go Market Securities does not know your personal scenario, nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of it is upon as any form of advice at all. It's just general in nature only. We are into the quarterly report season, which is probably being masked at the moment with what's going on in the other parts of the market, but we're here to talk to you about BHP's quarterly numbers. And they were slightly stronger than expected for March, and that's a nice thing to see, because there are other parts in their overall production report that was not so nice. Let's have a look at the stuff that mattered. Copper, up 2% on expectations. Iron ore, up 5%. That means if you have a look at it, in terms of where it sits, copper was the one to really highlight here. Well and truly a beat because of Spence in Chile, along with a better than expected number coming out of Escondida. The overall range now is at the upper end, between 210 and 250 kilotons, which is quite nice to see. The copper range at Escondida is now 1.72 to 1.91 megatons, including their overall guidance across the whole business. That's really impressive. It's also something to highlight, the South Australian assets, formerly known as Oz Minerals, are clearly going in quite nicely and the numbers coming out of them, although not part of consensus, so therefore a lot of them aren't being included, are at or above expectations from BHP synergy numbers. So clearly copper is something they want to highlight, clearly it is a future for them. Iron ore we know continues to be the absolute bedrock of what they do, it doesn't really move much. Overall, it is still at the top end of expectations for this calendar year, considering that we've seen Rio Tinto at a record all-time high. BHP is not far behind it. Different cost is coming down with regards to per tonne. But then we need to get to the other side of that, and that needs to look at Met Coal. Met Coal was a disappointment. There is no doubt about that. Met Coal production of six megatons was 17% below market expectations done because their open cut mines at Blackwater and Peak Downs was basically flooded out. BHP has also downgraded FY24 guidance by about four to five megatons, uh, and it's also increased costs per ton by seven US dollars to 119 to 125 US dollars a ton. So that's where there's a little bit of a headache because now not only is nickel, which I'll come to in a sec, a bit of a problem, you've now got coal also being a bit of a headache. The offset to it is that coal prices on the medical, uh, metallurgical side still remain quite high, but overall it's not what they needed considering that their two big arms are doing well. It's their troublesome smaller arms that are in the way. And that brings me to Nickel West. Not a huge amount of updates, but they are still in care and maintenance mode, which is a polite way of saying mothballing. They are still reviewing what's going on inside Nickel West and also Mugrave. But overall, the viewing and the reading between the lines, there is no sign of turning nickel back on. And there is no price at the moment that suggests it's gonna to get to a level that we'll see it being turned on in the next few years even. Overall, their expectation about what to do with nickel is clearly up for review. BHP is pretty ruthless with things that don't work and they will get rid of them. Look at what they did with petroleum. Is that now gonna happen with nickel? That's the question. I mean, we're talking about a turnaround of just two years of turning nickel into a four pillar strategy along with their other three to possibly being kicked out. That I think is the most interesting story going in these production numbers because it's otherwise pretty stereotypical BHP.